close to 4,000 children living in the womb are killed in abortion clinics every day from coast to coast in America. What is less well known is that over 18,000 of these children every year are children who are at the point of development of 21 weeks or more. 21 weeks or more, according to the Alan Guttmacher Institute, is a stage at which over 18,000 a year, that's some 50 babies a day in America, who are at the point of 21 or more weeks. This means children who have eyebrows and eyelashes, fingernails and toenails, who can hear and whose heartbeat can be heard with a simple stethoscope. You don't even need any fancy equipment to detect the heartbeats of these children. Kermit Gosnell's clinic in Philadelphia was raided in 2010. And about a year later, the grand jury report was issued. Let me just read from that report a sentence about what was discovered inside his clinic. The Philadelphia medical examiner analyzed the remains of 45 fetuses seized from the clinic. Of these, 16 were first trimester, 25 were second trimester, ranging from 12 to 21 weeks. Two were 22 weeks, one was 26 weeks, and one was 28 weeks. The grand jury report. The grand jury report, of course, led to the trial that our nation has been following now for nearly two months in that Philadelphia courtroom. And as you know, I've spent time there myself, sitting in the front row right behind Dr. Gosnell, actually, and listening to the arguments back and forth, listening to the witnesses, listening to the charges leveled against him. A lot of argument, a lot of testimony, a lot of dispute. But brothers and sisters, let me remind you today what was not in dispute in that courtroom, what is not in dispute in this Gosnell case. What was not in dispute is that there were living human children whose hearts he stopped. The dispute was, did he stop the heart while they were still in their mother's body or after they came out? That was the dispute, but there's no dispute that hearts were beating and hearts were stopped. There's no dispute that children were living and then they were killed. Nobody is saying these were not children. Nobody is saying they died naturally. Everyone agrees these children were killed. Nobody is saying they were blobs of tissue. Nobody is saying they were potential lives. Nobody is saying that they were just a choice. And this man has been on trial for murder. So there's something obviously profoundly important going on here in terms of how we respond to these children whose remains were discovered in this clinic. The remains were in milk jugs, orange juice containers, cat litter boxes, and in the freezer of his clinic, in various kinds of plastic bags, in jars where there were just the severed feet of many of these babies. This is what we're talking about. Nobody disputes these facts. What is it that is in dispute? What is it that is in dispute, brothers and sisters, it is who are these children and whose are these children. Are they just somebody else's problem, somebody else's choice? Are they medical waste? Or are they our brothers and sisters? Whatever people may think about the verdict that will be issued in regard to the man, Kermit Gosnell, there is a broader issue here. What will be the verdict about these children and about our responsibility to them? That's the broader question that faces America, that faces the world. 
and that is at the heart of the abortion debate. The prosecutors, the defense, the judge, they are right when they say that this trial was not about the legality of abortion. It's a bigger question. But nevertheless, abortion is on trial here. And what we're doing today is we're looking at these children and saying they are our brothers and sisters. That's what we're saying here today. That's what we're doing. They are our brothers and sisters. As the reading we just heard from the Gospel of Luke points out, a man had fallen in with robbers. The priest and the Levite who walked by him on that road, notice the Gospel says, they saw him. It wasn't that they didn't see him. It wasn't that they missed him and therefore they didn't stop to hell. They saw him. People are seeing the Gosnell trial. They are seeing and hearing about these 45 babies that were found in this, in this clinic. We're seeing the evidence, the difference between the priest and the Levite on the one hand and the Good Samaritan on the other, is that the Good Samaritan realized, this is my brother. I need to acknowledge him as such and I need to do something to help him. Who are these children? John Paul II wrote in 1995 the document called The Gospel of Life. And what we are doing here today springs from a truth that he referred to in that document when he wrote the following words. God has entrusted the life of every individual to his or her fellow human beings, brothers and sisters. We're going to give names to these 45 babies today including the babies referenced in the grand jury report, including the babies referenced by the witnesses in this trial, babies referred to as baby boy A, baby boy B, baby C, D, E, F, and G. Those seven babies we're naming today, and the 38 additional ones that were found in that clinic, and we're also remembering the countless others killed not only at Dr. Gosnell's clinic, but at abortion clinics nationwide. But some people will ask, well, who are we to give names to these babies? And why are we doing so? It's very simple. People have names. People deserve names. Whenever you meet someone or even hear about someone, one of the very first pieces of information you want is, what is their name? And one of the very first things you do in encountering any other person is you offer your own name. The name expresses the person. The name puts us in touch with the person. The name recognizes that there is a person there. And so today, we are claiming that these children are our brothers and sisters. What gives us to, the right to name them? Well, we're all responsible for one another. The lives of children, of course, are really entrusted to their parents, but in this case we have a situation like in every abortion where the parents are literally throwing them away. The parents are denying their responsibility towards their children. And so now we are saying, as we read in scriptures, in the Psalms, Though father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. And the Lord who receives us all, who made us all, and trusts us to the care of each other. That's why we can take the step today of acknowledging the humanity of these children and giving them their names. And we do this on the Feast of the Ascension in the Christian world today, 40 days after Easter. Christians remember the biblical account and the historical event of the apostles seeing Jesus taken up into heaven. What does this mean? It means God loves humanity. And he takes human nature up into his throne, lifts it up, exalts it. To the heights of heaven. It's not just Jesus ascending into heaven. It's our human nature ascending into heaven. The same human nature shared by the rich and the poor, by the healthy and the sick, by the born and the unborn. This is the human nature that these children found in Dr. Gosnell's clinic also share. And so the question today is, are they our brothers and sisters? The question today is, will human nature be lifted up to the heights and exalted, affirmed and respected? Or will it be thrown away with the medical waste? That's the question. That's the issue. And together with acknowledging the humanity of these children, brothers and sisters, today, 
We issue a call for healing. Because these children do have parents. Their parents may have abandoned them in, a, in an episode of despair and fear. Only God knows where they all are right now. But we're issuing a call for healing for them and for everyone who has had an abortion. At the heart of our ministry of Priests for Life, with the work of Rachel's Vineyard and the Silent No More Awareness Campaign, is the message, is the urgent invitation, is the call to healing, forgiveness, and peace. Acknowledging the humanity of these children, giving them names, is actually an important step of the process of healing after abortion that we engage in every day throughout the nation and around the world for people who have lost children to abortion. And so doing this and publicizing this nationwide is part of our message to all people who have had abortions, no matter when, no matter where they are, to again know that we are on your side. This is not a movement of judgment or condemnation. We do not condemn the mothers and fathers of the babies we name today. Rather, we embrace them too. We acknowledge their humanity as well. They too are our brothers and sisters. And we say to them, come with us to the Lord who has taken our humanity up into heaven. Come with us to Him and find healing and find peace. Come to Rachel's vineyard and experience the power of God lifting you up. Brothers and sisters, let us proceed then to name these babies here in this chapel. It was at this altar that we celebrated Mass on September 11th of 2001. It was through this window that we looked and saw the smoke rising from the Twin Towers. From this very spot, we looked and we saw it. And we grieved with the rest of the world and we prayed with the rest of the world and we acknowledged that even though the people dying at that very moment from that terrorist attack may in one sense have been strangers, yet we acknowledged none of them were. They were all, they all are even now, our brothers and sisters. That's what this is all about. We acknowledge the victims of that tragedy to be our brothers and sisters, even though we didn't know their names. They had names, but we didn't know their names. Now we do. And what have we done right over there in Manhattan? We have inscribed those names on the 9-11 memorial. And so today, facing the darkness and the tragedy of abortion, Facing the darkness brought to our attention by the Gosnell case, we say to these babies, you too are our brothers and sisters, created by God, entrusted to your parents, but not only to them, entrusted to us. And today, therefore, it is our honor to honor you with your name.